Return of Serve, an area of the game that can sometimes be undervalued and just seen as getting the rally started. Well, in this video, we're going to show you how to effectively return serve. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to set up effectively for a return of serve, how to move and hit the return of serve, five essential returns of serves you can do, and how to return a flick serve. The setup. This is a big fundamental area for when we're returning serve and often where we see the most mistakes. So David, talk us through an effective setup for returning serve and doubles. Yeah, precisely. Like what you said, a bad setup can then cause a bad return of serve. So let's start at the bottom at our feet. The main thing is we're going to have our non-racket leg forward and our racket leg backwards. The reason we want the racket leg behind is because we, the main direction we're moving in is forward and backwards. If we're too side on, it's much, much harder to do that. Both feet are now going to be pointing at the server because that's the direction we're going to be going in. And on this racket leg, your back foot, I want you nice on your balls of your feet, on your toes, because it allows us to drive forward to that return of serve. I think sometimes in the area what we see, particularly with feet, is that people do get into this position, but actually they still remain quite tall. So there's no kind of drive in their legs. How, how much are we going to bend the legs? What are we looking for? Yeah, I mean, you've got to think of yourself as a loaded spring in a way. You've got to be sort of nice bent legs, ready to drive off. You look at sprinters, yeah. they're never straight leg. They can't, you can't push off that way. So you've got to imagine yourself about to pounce onto that shuttle, load into those legs so you can push forward. Okay, so we've covered the legs. What area do you want to look at next? So let's look at racket and specifically here grip. What grip should we be using? And this actually depends on the side. So I'm on the odd side here and most serves are going to be coming to the T or slightly towards my body. They're the shortest flight time as well. So I have less time to react to them. So I'm going to go with a forehand grip here. It's going to come to my forehand side as a right-handed player. Left-handed player, this would be different, obviously the other way. This also means, yes, if it does go cross, I've got more time, it's the longer flight time that I can change my grip if needed to hit on the backhand side. This would then be the other way around for the even side. I'm gonna be, most of those shuttles are gonna be coming towards the tee, slightly into my body, and that's gonna be more on my backhand side. I'm gonna use a bevel grip for this, purely because it allows my wrist to, to manipulate a bit more, hit a variety of shots and then I can easily flip over to the forehand side if needed. So next to consider is probably racket position. Now I know that we see a lot of people again where they can get all these other things right and as they set up, they don't really stretch their racket, the racket stays quite close. Now we obviously know that the first thing they're gonna to have to do when the shuttle is hit is stretch their racket out. So how do we wanna be setting up with the racket position? Yeah, and it, it, this is such a fundamental thing. And I think people forget they think too much about their feet and what their feet are doing. They forget the racket's the thing that hits the shuttle. Yeah. So we want to get this out in front. We want to maximize the reach we've got. So I want a nice sort of extension of this arm, not fully locked out because we need to be able to maneuver it, but nice out in front of you. You should be able to see those strings right in front of you towards the server. And probably one of the biggest mistakes we see is biasness towards certain sides. Mm. So people standing very biased on their backhand over here or even biased on their forehand here. And the issue with this is it just makes it so hard to change over to the other side if they serve across you. And it really sort of shows your opponent what you're planning to do in a way. So I like a real kind of neutral position here. So I could, I could manipulate both sides if needed and it's sort of cutting me in half out front. I think the last area to consider with racket position is obviously we've talked about how far in and out, but actually how, how high. So we're generally wanting to have this racket level with the tape because then it allows us to cover the best possible serve that can come over. If that shot is high above the tape, it doesn't matter because we're going to have time to bring the racket up. But what we don't have time for is if we're above the tape or below and that serves really good, we're having to make adjustments on the height of the racket. Precisely. So lastly, the most common question we get is where do I actually stand when I'm returning serve? So David, talk us through that. Yeah, and it's, it's where so many mistakes are made or we can, it can really ruin a return of serve, depending on where you're standing. So the main principle we sort of go by is you need to be as far forward as you can while still feeling like you can get to the flick. And I think a lot of people, they do it almost every way around. They're like, oh, I want to make sure I can get the flick. And they sacrifice this low serve. The low serve is the most common one that will happen. You don't know if someone can flick and we want to get on top of this, it's the shortest flight time. 
So really test yourself, practice, how far forward can I comfortably get and still feel like I can get back to the flick. And it doesn't, with the flick, it doesn't mean you have to be able to smash it. Just get back and, and hit, a, hit a decent shot. But it is very much about testing yourself. And I think with that, what we see is that people are protecting, again, the longer flight time with the flick. Now, we're not saying the movement backwards is, is easy. It's still something that we have to drive off with yeah. the legs, and we've obviously covered that in the setup. But what we see is people cover the flick, and as Dave said, just end up hitting lifts all the time on return of serve. So we're already in such a negative position, rather than trying to cover, again, as we talked about earlier, the quickest flight time on this low serve. So lastly, Dave, do we need to consider where across the line we're actually standing? Definitely, and I think this is an element of personal preference, but there's still certain mistakes we don't want to make. For example, we don't want to be too close to the tee here. It's inviting an out wide serve, and it's actually gonna be quite difficult to get back to the flick. Like, same, same thing, we don't wanna to be too far over here. It, massive gaps everywhere. We're just inviting other serves. I like to be about two thirds across, it's closest to the middle. Nice little low serve here I can get, but I still feel like I can get out wide and the flick as well. And I guess the reason that we're leaving maybe a little bit more space on the out wide low serve is again, we keep talking about it, but flight time. The shuttle is gonna travel further to this, which gives us more time to react. So that's why we can leave a little bit of a bigger space there. Precisely. So actually hitting the shuttle on this return of serve. Dean, what are some of the fundamentals we want to see and maybe some of the mistakes we, we don't wanna see? I think the main thing that we've covered a little bit already in the setup is that the racket is, is key. And sometimes we see people going with the feet and that's great, we still want to be faster shot, but this is what hits the shuttle, the racket. So we have to value this as number one. So when we're in this good setup position, everything's ready. As soon as that serve is hit, I really want to try to feel like my shoulder and arm are stretching first with my legs following after. And this will allow me to take the shuttle much closer to the tape rather than kind of springing with the legs and leaving the racket behind. And then we end up naturally taking the shuttle a lot lower. A great demo I like to use with a lot of players is Dean, if you can set up here, ready. And I'm just gonna pull Dean's racket and he's gonna just rotate his torso and see how far he can get without even moving a leg yet. And that's, the, you can intercept the shuttle so early here just by getting a bit of rotation and then your leg follows. And it's such a great way to hit a return of surf. Exactly, and it's going to make sure you're a lot earlier, closer to the tape. I also, something else I use with a lot of clients is you're trying to hit the shuttle as close to the tape as you possibly can. You're in this race with the yeah. shuttle. You're not allowing the shuttle to come towards you whatsoever. And it just forces you to kind of spring in and be a lot more positive on the return. So the question we get asked a lot on YouTube is racket leg versus non-racket leg for coming in to hit that return of serve. The pros often flip between both. But Dean, what is the benefit of one versus the other? I think the main thing to talk about first is a lot of this is decided on, on where you're standing when you return serve. So obviously mentioned in the setup that different people are going to return from different places based on how confident they are of getting forward to low serve and obviously being able to cover the flick. So if it's that you're dropping back to say this far away from the service line, realistically, you coming in with your non-racket leg just isn't going to cover enough distance. So if you are in this position, you would generally always be coming through on your racket leg to still try and feel like you can get the shot as close to the net. However, if you're someone that likes to stand reasonably close to the service line and still able to cover the flick, we do have both options. Now we believe that if you're coming through on your racket leg, it's because you're trying to hit a steeper shot or you're trying to play something where the shuttle is going to come down very, very quickly. Okay, because this way you have more time to get ready and the shuttle is going to be coming up over the net. Now, if you come in with your non-racket leg, it might well be they're trying to commit to a harder, flatter shot. Now, what this does is naturally, I'm not now as close to the net. So it enables me to then get ready again for the faster, flatter shot coming back, which gives me more time to intercept the shuttle. And I think for a lot of players, it is also down to, to preference as well. Certain shots just might feel a bit easier for, with certain legs. And I think it's very much similar to your setup and trying different things and seeing what works for you as well. And I think coming back to whether you're non-racket leg or racket leg leading as you hit, it's still as explosive as you possibly can. And that's probably what we're encouraged the most rather than getting too worried about which leg, just feel that we're exploding onto the shuttle. So here are the five essential return of serves we are going to be taking you through. Number one is middle net. Now middle net is a fantastic return of serve and used all the time by professionals, 
because it reduces the amount of angles your opponent can play and your opponent often is forced to lift. However, it is worth noting the middle net only really works if you stand far forward on your return. If we're too far back, we end up taking the shuttle too low. We have to be taking the shuttle nice and early to play this middle net. So how are we actually gonna be hitting this middle net? So we wanna be in our nice loaded ready position for our return of serve. And we're gonna really drive forward towards the tape. Rack it nice and early and level with the tape. Once we're in this position, we're gonna be essentially playing a doubles net shot. So the racket face is pointing towards the tape. With soft hands and a bevel grip, we're gonna slightly come down behind the shuttle. Obviously, if you're taking this on a forehand side, you'll be using your forehand grip. But because we're on the backhand, we're gonna be using a bevel grip getting that shuttle slightly to spin and then just go over the net. Return number two is the poke through the middle. Now this is a great return to couple up with the middle net return because they look so similar until contact. So everything is exactly the same. We're gonna get in our nice loaded prep position, really drive towards the shuttle. Now once we're in the same position as we play this backhand net, we're gonna with a loose grip, squeeze, which is gonna punch the shuttle towards the net player. The important thing to note here is we're not really trying to punch the shuttle towards that rear court player. We almost wanna find that gap between the front court player and the rear court player to almost entice that front court player to try and hit the shuttle. So return number three is the soft mid court return. And I'm not gonna bore you with the same setup. It's exactly the same as before. We're gonna get into our nice position. Now there are two ways to hit this shot. Way number one is if we're really early on the shuttle, we've really got there nice and quick, and we're gonna get that racket face pointing downwards slightly. And from here, we can then brush across the shuttle, directing it down into what we call no man zone, which is between the front court player and the rear court player in a zone that they're both not sure where they're going, who's gonna hit it really. So way number two allows you to hit the shuttle from different heights. So if you're someone who has to take the shuttle slightly later, this is a great shot for you because it allows you to take the shuttle away from the net player. So how to hit this shot? Well, we're actually gonna approach with the racket face pointing slightly upwards here. This will allow, if you are slightly lower, still to be able to play this shot. Once we go to get to the shuttle, as early as we can still, we're gonna hit through the shuttle in the direction we want to play the shot. So return number four. This is a hard straight return into the corner. If you are able to get to the shuttle early, you can maintain a nice flat racket. However, you can still play this shot if you're slightly later, your racket position will just slightly change, causing the shuttle to marginally go upwards, but still very much a shot you can play. So how are we gonna hit this? Well, it's very similar to this soft push we played to the mid court, but instead we're gonna use that wrist to generate a bit more power to drive the shuttle into the corner. Shot number five. Now this is a deceptive punch across the court into the corner. Now the reason we want to make this slightly deceptive is one, it's gonna to have to go back through that net player and two, a lot of our shots are all approaching the same way. So if we can still approach the same way and play into the other corner, we add that great level of deception just to get on top of that rally a bit more. So I'm gonna show you how to do this on the backhand side and the forehand side. Starting with the backhand, we're gonna do the exact same setup and we're gonna approach the shuttle as if we're playing that soft push straight to the middle or straight into the corner. However, we're gonna have a nice loose grip and once we approach this shuttle, we're gonna slightly roll the wrist with your loose grip to change those racket face angle to point cross. Once, once we're here, we're doing a nice punch action into the corner. So the forehand side, very, very similar. We're gonna set up the same way. We're gonna look like we're gonna play this shot down the line and straight. But as we go to hit the shot, we're gonna turn this wrist and because we have this nice loose grip, our grip's almost gonna change to a pan handle grip to allow us to punch that shuttle cross into the corner. So finally, the flick serve. And this is probably one of the biggest questions we get asked. How do I return a flick serve? I can't get back to a flick serve. What's the movement back to a flick serve? So Dean, how do we go about returning a flick serve? 
So we just go back to our setup again and, and look a little bit of weight distribution in between the legs. So if I'm taking my setup here, I've probably got about 70% weight on my front leg, 30% weight on my back leg. Now, as soon as we see that flick being hit, it's all about transferring that weight onto our back leg so we can feel like we can start to drive off towards the back of the court. But I think the biggest thing to talk about is that you're probably not gonna be in a fantastic position when you hit this flick. It's not an overhead where we're able to get on balance and kick through. It's kind of just feeling like we're getting there by any means necessary to take the shot as early as we possibly can above the tape. And even that may feel like sometimes that you're off balance, but if you're still taking the shot here, it looks like you can hit a much more effective shot than actually trying to maybe feel like you're getting behind it more and that shuttle now feeling like it's dropped, that's not gonna be as effective. Yeah, and I think people think it has to look nice. It's, it's not meant to be pretty, it's just gotta be effective. However way you move back, whether it's jumping or stepping, you've just gotta get back and be able to get that shuttle hopefully coming in a downwards direction. Exactly, and make contact as soon as you possibly can. Don't allow the shuttle to travel anymore. And as David said, if that's one jump, that's no problem. If it means that you've got a chassis in between and then jumping back whatever the flick requires. So we hope you've enjoyed this video. We've covered the setup for a turn of serve as well as how to move on to a low serve, five different options that you can start working into your game straight away, and how to return a flick serve. But David, are there any other comments that you'd like to add? So I think one of the big ones is, between points is, the, is that you've got so much time between points, and your return of serve is one of the only shots in badminton where you can actually think about what shot you're gonna play. And so many people don't think about what return they're gonna do until that person's serving and they end up just playing reactively. Take your time between those points and think, what return am I gonna do? And your returns will become so much better. So we hope you found this return of serve video useful. Please hit the like and subscribe button. And if you wanna see more content, head over to our Instagram and give us a follow.